Yeah, look, it's with the, the greatest of pleasure that we uh, we announced today that uh, Jack Viney has uh, signed with the Melbourne Football Club. He's um, he's obviously the, the son of uh, Todd Viney, a, a uh, former captain of the club, 250 plus games and all Australian player. And he'll like me to continue reading out this list of, uh, of accolades, Hall of Fame player and, and, uh, and a member of uh, Melbourne's team of the century. And it's a it's a great honour for for us to. Sign our first father-son in, in some period of time, and certainly the, for the uh, the first time in, in a long time where we've had you know, the, the son of a player who uh, achieved what Todd did to come to our club. We spent a fair bit of time with uh, with Jack over the last the last few years, and we obviously got to know him as a uh, as a youngster uh, in and around the around the football club. It'd be fair to say, as a as a four and five year old, he terrorised a few people uh, running uh, around the club now. Jimmy Steins has certainly got uh, vivid memories, as has uh, Jackie Emerton, who's, uh, who's been involved in our footy department for much of that period of time. But it's, uh, it's pleasing that he's actually put that, that energy that he, uh, that he showed as a, as a youngster into, uh, into his football and, uh, and has quite clearly you know, achieved a lot in his, uh, in his young football life. He's, uh, he's a guy who's uh, he captained his, his state last year in, uh, in uh, South Australia in the, uh, the Under-16 Championships. And uh, you know, we've got a you know, very, very uh, high regard for... Uh, for, for Jack as a player, he's come through the, the system where he's he's had to be assessed as a, as a player along the sign, same lines as any potential draftee. So he's uh, he's been very much gone through you know what uh, what any of the players who were, who were drafted on uh, on Thursday night went through in regard to the testing and, and a very rigorous process. And uh, and the good the good news is that he's uh, he's showing all the signs of uh, we believe to have a you know a long term career in the game. You know, it's a, personally it's a it's a real positive. I got to. Um, uh, no, Todd as a, as a youngster coming through the system when I was recruiting manager here, and, uh, and actually had the, the pleasure of signing uh, Todd some uh, some years ago on the, the washing machine at Stewie Spencer's house in uh, 1986 around grand final time, and uh, to now have uh, Jack coming through the, the system, it's a, is, is a fantastic thing. To actually, you know, at a time when we there has been a lot of the, the, the coming back, if you like, of people who have uh, have got a very strong involvement. You know, with the Melbourne Football Club, starting of course with uh, with Jimmy Steins and, and Chris Connolly, and you know Todd's recent appointment into a really important development, uh, basically overseeing all of our development uh, programs. To have uh, now then the, the son of a uh, of a great player coming through the system, who's deserved the opportunity in his own right, is is a great thing. So, welcome Jack to the club, mate, and uh, and we look forward to a terrific career from you. And uh, I'm sure if uh, anyone would have any questions of uh, Todd, uh, Jack, or myself, we're more than happy to answer those. Jack, did your family time back in Adelaide test your allegiance or not? Uh, uh, did you ever waver in your commitment? Nah, nah. Um, you know, the Melbourne, I've always had a soft spot for the Melbourne Free Club. Um, you know, dad, dad played here and uh, my uncle Jay played here as well. So uh, growing up, growing up, I've always had a, a massive soft, soft spot for the Demons. So um, and it wasn't, well, it wasn't a hard decision to to make that. Yeah. What do you remember of those days when you were four and five and running around the club? It was for us down here that'd be a pretty cool upbringing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember too much as I was I'm pretty young, but I remember going to the creche and you know, old Junction Oval where where Dad used to play. So no, I can remember those days, but I can't remember too much of him playing. So unfortunately, but he tells me it was alright. <laughs> was it more of an attraction or less that your dad was going to be working here as well? I'm more of an attraction, you know, you always want your, your father around you, so I was, uh, it's good. Do you expect he'll go easy on you or be harder on you because you're Irish, son? Yeah, I definitely expect him to go harder on me, uh, yeah, but uh, come to my footy, he's always been, been tough, but um, yeah, nah, it's good. Todd, what role did you have in your final decision as well? Um, well, a difficult situation, really. Um, from a romantic point of view, I was... Uh, the idea of that your son playing at the club that you uh, represented and very passionate about was certainly really enticing. Uh, from a parental point of view, you always want your son to have the best opportunity. So, um, you know, my, my role was certainly just to take a step back and, and for Cameron and Chris and the Melbourne Footy Club to introduce uh, the club to Jack, really. I mean, he was pretty young when I was playing and doesn't didn't have that much... Uh, you know, I have a memory of those times, so the club's gone through an enormous transition since I left. Um, so really it was about me taking a backward step, letting Cameron and Chris and the club introduce themselves to Jack and selling the story of the Melbourne Footy Club, which Jimmy started to put back, you know, in a really exciting way. And, uh, and then once Jack really, he made the decision on, yes, I want to I want to play at the Melbourne Footy Club. Uh, once he'd made that decision, uh, we had some meetings with the club to make sure that 
you know, from a parental point of view, they had everything in place, and uh, we were both Megan and myself were really comfortable with the direction of the club. So uh, it was his decision you're, in the end. You'd have been as comfortable with what they had to offer as a player as recently as a couple of years ago. No, I think uh, I think that's a really good question. You know, going back, uh, you know, two years ago, the club was in enormous uh, difficulties uh, before Jimmy came on board. You know, five million dollars in debt and uh, without a without a base. You know, the fantastic facilities here now at Amy Park. So the club was really, you know, from uh, from a directional point of view, struggling. But uh, since Jimmy, Jimmy's come on board and Cameron and Chris, uh, you know, it's fantastic momentum at this club now. Um, been lucky enough to pick up exciting recruits, so it's a really exciting place. But you know, two years ago, it might have been a different story. How does the feeling of playing compared to how watching your son play is inspiring? Hey, footballer. Oh, it's just just amazing that we're, we're sitting here talking about Jack playing out for footy. Uh, you know, he's also just got his driving license and he's got his first girlfriend and uh, things are you know, just changing so quickly. You know, we're growing up, Cameron's uh, you know, reminiscing about signing me. Um, so the years just go, go past so quickly. Uh, super exciting from, from my point of view. I've always loved watching uh, Jack and mother son Max play their, their sport. Get an enormous enjoyment out of that. And uh, it's great to see the opportunities that are now presented and hopefully he can grab them with both hands. Jack, what are you doing next season? Uh, next year I'll, I'll be going back to, to Kerry Grammar where I was previously to move to Adelaide so I'll be playing school, to, school footy for them and, and hopefully getting a few games for the Oakley Chargers, the TSF, TSC Cup team. Yeah. How are his kicking skills, mate? I think he's a little bit further progressed than what I was, Mike, <laughs> which is a, probably a great thing for all the uh, Melbourne supporters to know. Um, but no, he's obviously spent uh, a few more hours kicking the football than what I did at this age. I was running around the, the tennis court hitting uh, tennis balls, but... No, I think uh, it's a positive, Mike. He can uh, actually kick, which is good. <laughs> Todd's attitude was, uh, why make it easier for those forwards? <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe him as a player? Um, oh, he's, he's very competitive. Um, you know, he's a, he's a midfielder. Um, he's played all his footy there, obviously. So, uh, uh, you know, slight slant to the inside midfielder role, uh, but it's probably a condition that he can you know, run also. You know, running midfield, I think today's game dictates that, and he's been lucky enough that he's got some speed and some endurance, not elite in either of those, but uh, sufficient to be outside as well as inside. Swami, where do you think Jack will go draft-wise? What do you think? Oh, it would be hard to predict. We're talking, um, you know, the assumptions when you when you nominate the father-son as early as we have is that uh, the other clubs, they might, be, they might get their heads together at some stage to force the pick up. But, um, you know, and, that, and that's a choice we've had to make. You know, We're basically projecting a player two years out before you would normally have to. And it's almost like what recruiting once was. The, the draft age, not, not so long ago, was actually looking at players, you know, Jack's age. So so we, we had some references in, in regard to that. Obviously, because we've had the early picks the way that we've had in recent times, we've had to project players out as well. It'd be fair to say, you know, a player like Tom Scully was on, on the radar at this age, like most most young players. So, so the, the, the pleasing thing is that it just adds to... Obviously, a, a group of, of young players who get to grow together. You know, the, the, the opportunity of bringing you know, Jack into the system now, where, whereby he can establish friendships, and um, and a lot of the friendships, as we know, you establish at this age, are the ones which do last forever. And, and we, we've we've just come back from China. One of the main things coming out of that was the opportunity of these young guys to grow together. And uh, so Jack now has that opportunity, and uh, he comes through with. Um, you know, a little bit extra, you know, obviously he's carrying around with him in, in terms of, uh, you know, his, his father's background here, but probably he, no more so than, you know, than a Tom Scully or a Jack Watts or a Jack Trengove in terms of their early draft picks, so he can obviously learn from those guys as well. Jack, how much are you looking forward to playing alongside some of those guys like Tom Scully and Jack Trengove alongside uh, yourself in the midfield? Yeah, it's definitely very exciting. Um, you know, you grow up watching, you know, Footy players, you know, you definitely you know want to play next to him. So it's definitely uh, very daunting to think that that's going to happen uh, within the next couple of years. So, well, hopefully, so um, no, nah, I'm really looking forward to to the future ahead. So, yeah. Jack, did you play any other sports seriously as a junior, or was it always going to be Aussie rules? Uh, well, early on, I used to play basketball pretty seriously, but I had to give that up for footy. So, and yeah, so just work hard on my footy at the moment. He's a terrible tennis player. Yeah. Cricket <laughs> terrible. <laughs> One trick pony. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, what's the, what path now will Jack follow for the next couple of years through the case of Scorpion? Yeah, that's, but what we will, well, the next year is, is, is going into year 11, so that's obviously, you know, we, we have to, you know, respect and reflect, even in his program, you know, what that will actually
actually mean. So, so very much about uh, getting the best out of his education. He's, he's into his schooling as well, which is important, and, and does well with his schooling. It's important that's, that's maintained. Um, so you go to Kerry, who will play a little bit of footy, as you mentioned, hopefully with Oakley. Um, do the normal sort of uh, under play of his age stuff in and around you know, championships and those types of things. The next year we'll be hopeful, uh, similar to what um, a number of players have been able to do with Greater Western Sydney and also uh, with the Gold Coast, that he might be able to come into our system on the same on the same basis. So we'll make application to the AFL that in his year 12 he might be able to have a, a few games with the, the Casey Scorpions during the year. And this year he got, um, I think there was a, the prospect of playing senior football for North Adelaide at one point, which... Um, you know, the family talked about but didn't do this year, so the expectation would have been next year had he stayed in Adelaide that he would have played a bit of senior footy for North Adelaide. So so we just have to be very mindful of balancing out all of those requirements. Um, the strength and probably the major incentive on, on both you know, from the family's point of view but also ours was to, to bring him into the system now where you can manage the loads. You know, if you There's a real challenge with young players and the amount of football that they actually play that we need to be very, very mindful of that, and particularly with players who like to run and like to compete. And that's obviously what Jack likes to do. Was there a need to announce this to you, Bill? Um, he was always going to be yours. Yeah, well, side. not necessarily. He had the choice of going to Greater Western Sydney, um, he, and he had uh, potentially other choices. You know, we were we were there was a little bit of conjecture there for a while. Um, you know, we've done a lot of work over probably you know, the best part of twelve months now, but particularly in the last three or four months uh, to get it locked away. Uh, that you know, we there was a vulnerability with Jack that uh, father sons didn't have in the previous generation because of the access to players that uh, Greater Western Sydney had. So we'd sooner get it out of the road now, uh, get it sorted, get him into the program, and uh, and uh, he's a Melbourne player from this this point onwards, and hopefully have a long career with the club.